Hello! Today we are at Wickham Air Park with the Piper PA-38 Tomahawk in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But the actual reason we're here is not to look at the Tomahawk or Wickham Air Park. It's to look at two other products. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is a product called Flight Control Replay. And the reason we're looking at it is it allows us to fly a flight and then replay the flight endlessly, looking at it from different angles. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to change the scenery. So we're going to be flying the basic circuit at Wickham Air Park, but we're going to be using a product called Global Trees HD from Orbex. And this will allow us to change the trees and the grass in the simulator, or the rendering of them, to make them a bit more season appropriate. So I guess this is kind of important of what's coming in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 with the seasons but this allows us to do it in 2020. So, okay, I'm realizing this has got a, a short shelf life, but Orbex asked me if I might like to take a look at it. So here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna go and jump inside the PA38 and get it up and running if I can remember how. So we've got the batteries and the alternators. We've got the fuel. We'll go and set onto the left tank. We're only gonna do a single circuit, so we should have plenty of fuel and be able to get on with this fairly quickly. So mixture goes to rich. And I don't know if we need the fuel pump on, but we'll just do it for a moment and exercise the throttle while we're doing that. So let's go and put the anti-collision lights to on. And shall we turn the engine over and see what we get? We have an engine. So like I said, it's been a while since I've been anywhere near this aeroplane, so we'll see how we get on with it. Okay, so go and turn on the various radios. Not that we'll be using them, but it's always handy to have them on, isn't it? So, um, Peter, he can come on. We don't need a fuel pump, obviously. So. Put the yoke back in place, and we're going to be visual from now on. So let's go and turn head tracking on, and centre it up. So we can have a little look around our aeroplane here on the ground. Let's go and check outside. Yes, I've removed the chocks and the tie-downs and everything, which is pretty good, otherwise it wouldn't be going anywhere. So release the parking brake. So the things to take notice of today, I guess, are the grass and the trees nearby. So this is stock flight simulator scenery we're seeing at the moment. So when we get to the runway apron, well actually let's stop here and let's start recording with uh, the replay tool. Okay, so let's see how this works. So it's connected to the simulator, so we hit record. And we can type in a, a file name, so Wickham dot fcr and save and it will say to want to replace it because i've been playing with it this morning and it says it's recording okay so we just leave that going in the background now so we'll minimize that and we'll get on with our flight so we're going to do this basic circuit of wickham air park but we're paying special attention to the scenery, really. I guess for this first look around, we'll get to see Wickham, or to see the circuit and for me to explain it as we go. It's kind of an interesting uh, pattern at Wickham, or well, certainly the version of it I'm going to do, because there's a noise abatement area. So we're going to climb out to 1,500 feet. So let's go and calibrate the altimeter, make sure we're accurate. We're going to climb out to 1,500 feet, but we're also going to turn 230 degrees once we leave the air, airfield. So you can see it's just past 240 degrees, the actual runway direction. So, full throttle. So we're coming up through 50 knots, 60 knots, and gently rotate, and we're in the air. Maintain full throttle for the moment, so we're climbing, climbing, climbing. 
As we reach the edge of the airfield, we make a left turn for 230 degrees. And we maintain 230 degrees until we have the Hambledon Valley in sight, which I'll point out in a moment. There's a few visual reference points and different pilots use different reference points to do this in the real world. So climbing out and we can have a look out of the window and see the default flight simulator scenery. So there's no other add-ons installed. So we just come through a thousand feet. So we're climbing out. So you can see the valley here. That is the Hambledon Valley. So we need to turn down it. The reason for flying along the valley as part of the circuit is to avoid some of the small towns. There's one of them here. There's another one the other side. And they've got, yeah, they've got noise restrictions. So if you get too close to them, then the, um, the airfield will get a phone call <laughs> from a furious resident. So we're coming up to 1,500 feet, so we're going to level out. Throttle back to 75%. So we'll get the aeroplane trimmed to hold 1,500 feet on its own. So how are we doing with the valley? So you can see there's the base of the valley. So we're going to try and guesstimate this. There are reference points, like I said, for different shaped fields along the way, which you can use. But we're just going to do this... Oh, hello. Sim's just frozen for some reason. Um, we're going to do this ourselves. So, do we get a turn coordinator in the PA38? Doesn't? It? Oh, yes, we do. So we use the turn coordinator. We've gained 100 feet there while we were busy looking around and gazing out of the window. So we'll try and lose that altitude. Let's go sit down a little bit. Yeah, as we're gaining speed, obviously we're gaining a little bit of lift as well. So we're looking to come around for 330 degrees. You've got a visual reference point. There's a communications tower in the distance. So 330 degrees. Fly along the valley. Now you've got another visual reference point here. They call it the beast, I think. It's like a, a copse of trees that looks a bit like an elephant or a bear. So we're flying out until we're adjacent to it. And we're also keeping an eye on there's a main road coming up. So we're back to 1500 feet. So you can see there's a main road that comes down past here. So before we go past that, we'll turn right. So as, as we're adjacent with the beast, we'll start our right turn to 60 degrees. So there is a field down here with trees in it, which you can use as another reference point for this, but we're going to start our turn. So again, use the turn coordinator. We've gone a little bit low there where we were looking around, so let's get that altitude back. So turning for 60, you'll see there's a field in the distance. We can use that as our target. So for the left edge of that field. So we maintain this direction. And what we're looking for, there's a hill just before this field on this side of the road. There's the main road into Wickham. And there's a, a country house with a hexagonal walled garden. The house has a golden ball on its roof. So we'll use that as our reference point. As soon as we can kind of see it down the corner of the um, edge of the aeroplane, we'll then start our right turn to just miss flying over the top of the road. And we fly off towards the industrial estate. So that's our next 90 degree turn. So then when we're flying towards the industrial estate, we begin descending back down to 1,000 feet, which puts us about 500 over the ground. And then we'll be back in towards Wickham. But the main reason for doing all of this is, is there's such a good variety of scenery around here that the Orbex trees add-on will look very different. So we'll get to see all the different grasses, the crops and the trees looking very different. So then, in the eventual YouTube video, you'll be able to skip backwards and forwards to compare them easily. Well, that's the plan anyway. So you can see I must have overshot slightly 
earlier in the flight because we're flying 70 degrees to get here instead of 60. So let's have a look out the window. So we should be seeing the house with the hexagonal garden and there it is. So we begin our right turn to avoid going over the top of the road. And we can cut the throttle back. So we're going 150 degrees now. We're looking to get back down to 1,000 feet now. So cut the throttle back. If you look out to the right, you'll see the airfield over here. So we want to be doing a 1,000 feet before we turn, ideally. So you can see the height is coming off. And again, you can see the runway is coming. OK, this is where head tracking really gives you a good benefit. So you can see on the Vassy lights, we're already at the right altitude. So it's just a case of bringing the aeroplane in. Overshot slightly there. Only a tiny amount. We can correct that easily enough. So we just follow the pattern in and manage airspeed. So we can come off the throttle. We've gone a little bit high there, look. To be honest, being a little bit high from this side of Wickham isn't such a bad thing to do because of the, the tree line. Obviously, if you go low, you're going to be in danger of clipping trees. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with your Bex trees, with how high they are. So back to idle. You see, we stayed actually remarkably high there, but we can bleed that speed off now. Whoa! Ballooning around. Must have had a little bit of a gust of wind there. And we're down. So wheel brakes on and wiggling around on the runway. This aeroplane's a bit of a box of frogs, isn't it, sometimes? So, again, this is going to be interesting to see what the grass looks like once Orbex is in evidence. So we'll taxi all the way back in as part of our recording until we get all the way back to the, the hard standing of the, the tarmac taxiway. We'll follow the line. So yeah, the, the real interest is looking at the trees and the grass around us, because it's going to change. And we'll be using um, flight control replay to replay this flight with the same aeroplane, but with obviously a different scenery in evidence. this thing bouncing around. It's very immersive, isn't it? So if we go left and then double back onto one of the parking spots. Should we go for one seven? Okay, parking brake on, cut the mixture, shut the fuel off,
and turn the alternator and the batteries off and we're cold and dark again. I didn't turn the radios off, did I? But that's not really why we're here. We're not here for proper procedures. I didn't use landing lights either, if anybody noticed. Um, we'll, um, the real interest now is for us to go and stop recording. Okay. And then we should be able to say load. Wickham. Open. And then if we hit play, watch what happens. So if we go and then go back out of the aeroplane, we can see ourselves retracing our steps. It's interesting we don't have any engine noise. Now, is that because the current state of the aeroplane has mandated that? So let's go and stop the recording. Let's press Control e Maybe that's a limitation of this. So if we press play again... Yeah, there we go. That's better, isn't it? So again, we get to watch this now, to see ourselves from outside, which is always going to be fun, isn't it? So we just watch this little take off and then we'll pause recording and I'll go back out of the simulator and load the scenery in from Orbex to see what it looks like. So we could change the time of day or anything really. But it gives you a very different perspective, doesn't it? Being able to watch the flight from outside. So there's our left turn over the edge of the airfield out to 230 degrees. Climbing out to 1,500 feet. And obviously you can have a good look around the fields and the trees and see what they look like. So, I'm going to pause recording there and we'll come back in a moment. I'll reload this file with this aeroplane at this airfield, but with different scenery. Okay, so we're back in the simulator and we're recording again and we got the um, flight control replay showing us our flight but the grass and the trees have been replaced. So we now have, I'll show you the options we have chosen if I can get the correct window open. So we've gone for the fall and spring trees and grass type 1 from Global Trees HD. So it'll be interesting to see. The grass looks like it's been cut a bit better. <laughs> so the, the short grass actually looks better. Much more representative of what you might expect to find in the field. It's a bit more lush. And the trees, we have a selection of different fall colours and tree models. So this is going to be interesting. So yeah, the grass on the ground looks a lot better than the default grass from the simulator. It's shorter. The trees are... Now let's go and uncover some of this scenery. So we've got it on live weather at the moment. Let's go for a few clouds and 10 in the morning, which is what we had before. So you can see the difference there to the trees and the fields. So I think the base texture on the fields is the same. So it's, you know, it's coming straight from the texture mapping. But the trees are certainly better. 
And when they're caught in the sunshine, we go and remove the clouds so you get to see that. So we'll put clear skies on. So we've got the autumn clouds going on. Actually, it looks better with the um, few clouds, doesn't it? With a bit of relief going on. So here's the Hambledon Valley. We'll be turning right into it very soon. It's just interesting, isn't it, to see the differences. If anything, it's a bit too colourful, but we can obviously go and try some different options out with that. So we're starting our, our right turn into the Hambledon Valley. Isn't it different seeing the simulator from outside like this? You can see why people use flight control replay, can't you? Quite apart from you can just, you know, rewind your flight. So you can see there's the, the beast copse of trees. So then there's the, the post in the distance, so we'll be lining up to the somewhere between the, the road and the the communication tower. How cool is this though? To so get a really good view there, look of what the trees look like. So one of the other things you can do with flight control replay is obviously speed up as well. So if we go two times, or four times, we can obviously turn that back off, but if we go four times, for example, we can speed up so we can go around the circuit a bit more quickly. Let's move this out of the way. Let's um, turn off the head tracking as well while we're doing this. So then we can come around to see the airfield. So it's, it's quite, actually, this is quite good, isn't it? So you get to see what these trees look like when they're drenched in sunshine and an autumn view. Very cool. So let's speed this back up again. So again, it's following what I did on the previous flight. And then we started to slow down and we're coming in towards Wickham, so... Let's go and slow this back down to normal speed again. And we can see this approach and landing. Now remember we bobbled a little bit over the landing, so it'll be interesting to see how high a resolution this recorded the approach in. I suspect it recorded everything, much to my embarrassment, but I never fly this aeroplane, so that's half the fun, isn't it, of jumping into a different aeroplane and remembering how it behaves. I think we had live weather on at the time as well, so I had a bit of a gust of wind as I was over the runway and being such a light aeroplane, it obviously was affected by it. It's interesting, isn't it, though, to see these autumn trees. How much fun is this, though, being able to look around during approach? over the main road. There was that bobble. We had a sudden gust of wind, I think, on approach. OK, so now we're going to get our opportunity to see what this grass looks like up close.
let's go and jump inside the aeroplane. Put the head tracking on. So what does the grass look like? I think it's better. It's shorter, isn't it? The plane porpoising around on the suspension on the nose wheel. Kicking up dust as well from the grass. Or clouds of dry dirt, I guess. So, having done that, what we're going to go and do now is stop that replay. So notice as soon as we stop replaying we're actually live in the simulator it's just the the replay has re released control. So what we're going to do is go and change this so what we'll try next is winter or summer or spring fall or the default biome. Summer winter we were using fall spring notice you can have different um, parts of the world as well yeah, so we can have spring fall in the southern hemisphere. Winter or summer in the southern hemisphere. Fall or spring, which is what we were using in the northern hemisphere. Summer, we'll try summer and winter in the northern hemisphere. And instead of using gr grass type, type 1, we'll go for grass type 2, maybe? So all we have to do is apply that to the sim, but I won't do it until I've shut the sim down, because obviously it's going to rip the contents of the simulator's brain out to do it. So I'll pause recording and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here we are back in the simulator, back recording, and we've got the scenery updated. So this is the summer biome by the look of it. So this is summer or winter, summer in the northern hemisphere, winter in the southern hemisphere, and grass type two. So let's have a little look around. So the short grass again looks better than the default simulator, but you can see the sunburn in the grass. It's quite marked, which is quite cool. It was quite mossy grass, doesn't it? So it's going to be interesting to see what the trees look like. So these are the summer northern hemisphere trees. Let's go and change the weather to make sure we've got the same lighting that we had previously. So we had a few clouds on live weather, didn't we? So again, that's taken some of the um, the shine off the trees, which is absolutely fine. So on the way around the circuit, we'll get to see the sun shining on the trees. So I had the time set to 10 o'clock previously. So let's go and make sure we've got the same there. 10.30 is fine. So again, that really does look like a summer day, doesn't it, in the UK? That's actually remarkable. Very, very good. So there is quite a lot of variation in terms of the lighting, isn't there? So when it's only ambient light, they come through as quite dark. But I guess there's the juxtaposition here against what's in the fields as well. But looking out across the, the landscape there, it's interesting. Okay, so we're just approaching the Hambledon Valley again. Here it comes along here, look. Again, we're really focusing today on the trees and the grass. So obviously we don't get to see the grass at altitude. We'll only see that when we get back to the airfield. 
So let's go and speed the flight control replay up to get us back round to the other side of the circuit. It's remarkable, isn't it? It really is good fun being able to see the simulator in this light. quite a handy tool to have for demonstrating things in the sim. So we're downwind. That really does look very UK summer, that landscape. So let's turn it back to real time. So you'll see us approaching the house here with the, the golden ball on the roof. It's the Hellfire Caves, if you're looking for it on the map. But yeah, the, the trees do make a big difference, don't they? Obviously at altitude they look quite dark. As you get closer, the colours seem to pop out a bit more, so we'll see that on approach. So there's the garden, there's the golden ball on the roof. Even though I only live a few miles away from here, I've only ever visited there a couple of times. So this is High Wycombe. It's funny, the hills into Wickham always seem a lot steeper by car. When you see them from the air, it's actually... Although you can kind of see some of the relief there. It, it never seems quite as steep when you see it from the air. So we should start our turn anytime soon. And there we go, in towards the runway again. So our main thing we're looking at here is the trees and the grass, really. Remember, this is the summer Northern Hemisphere biome that we've loaded into the the trees add-on. <laughs> that was our catching the wind again. Right, let's see what this grass will look like close up. So we go and jump inside the aeroplane. Could do with a few daisies or something, couldn't it? A few dandelions here and there. But otherwise, it's actually quite good. Let's have a look at it from outside. Yeah, so it's, it's more lush than the previous grass. But it's still better than the default simulator grass. So we're going to be driving over to park up 
in the usual place. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. This has been a bit of a, an adventure, really, to see what you can do with replacing the grass and the trees in the simulator, and to have a quick look at, obviously, uh, Flight Control Replay as well. So if we go and take off away from our aeroplane as we taxi in, and you get to see that final look around of what the summer looks like with the trees replaced. That looks amazing, doesn't it? It looks a lot more real. When caught in the right light circumstances, the trees do look a lot, lot better. You can see us pulling into the parking spot on parking 17 there with our little aeroplane and shutting it down. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. This has been a look at the Orbex Global Trees HD for Flight Simulator. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the notes of the video. And I'll see you again soon. Take care.